What's happening, everyone? Brandon Tyrell here, joined by Ryan McCaffrey. Now, last week, a little company you might have heard of called Apple, I mean, they make cellular telephones, if you're not aware, uh, they recently had an event, uh, revealed the iPhone 11, all the bells and whistles. During that event, they also revealed something called Apple Arcade, a subscription-based game storefront, and you were lucky enough to go down to Cupertino, uh, Apple's headquarters, and check it out. Yeah, they uh, showed off a bunch of the games. Now, there's 100-plus launching this week with the service. So, they're, But they're, what's cool about this, it really reminded me of Xbox Live Arcade in yeah. good ways. It's all curated, number one. Okay. So these are hand-chosen games. So no one can just throw something right, on there. Right, they're not just dumping yeah. anything on there. Number two, it's five bucks a month. Uh, no long-term contract and cancel whenever you want. Plus there's a free trial month and you can apply your subscription for up to five total family members. Oh wow. So that's so basically it's one $5 subscription for mostly your whole house. So if, if you, you have kids, like all yeah. of your kids on their cell phones can, can yeah. do their own thing. Super like that. Also the games that are in Apple Arcade are all ad free and they're the non-gross microtransaction uh, games. So it's not the predatory stuff. dollars so. for a hundred batteries. Yeah. Or yeah. So that's Right off the bat, that's all super consumer-friendly stuff. Right. Uh, now, the games themselves, again, this this is one reason why it really reminded me of Xbox Live Arcade, because uh, what they showed off at this event, some really good stuff. Yeah. The, the standout for me, uh, above all of them, was a game called Where Cards Fall. Yeah. And if you've played Hitman Go, which is my personal yes. favorite Go mobile game fantastic. of all time, yeah. Uh, it's it's sort of structurally very similar in that it's a sort of top-down isometric view. Uh, you're in this boy's imagination in this case, as opposed to a, 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 a board game hitman trying to assassinate mm -hmm. people. But mm -hmm. you're trying to get your character from point A to the exit at point B, and yeah. you have to pinch and grab these decks of cards around the play environment to stack them to certain heights. It'll, you pinch it and it'll make a house of cards. Right. And so you have to stack them up to certain heights and get your character on, but there might be wind that blows through the level to knock down some of the cards. Puzzle-based obstacles. Yeah, exactly, yeah. so really super like that. Cool. And then the other one that I super liked uh, of the lot was a game called Overland, which right. is, it's sort of a roguelike road trip, escape these crazy monsters. <laughs> uh, really neat art style, kind of like a minimalist, simplistic 3D art style, mm -hmm. but it's a, uh, it's turn-based and you have sort of, you know, a movement field you can only move so far per turn. Right. And you're trying to scavenge supplies and things uh, and, and you have, you'll have party members and basically just, you're trying to get you pull out over, of this horrible... Loot the supermarket, yes. get back in and take off. Exactly. Right. So that was that was super fun. That it really had ver a very kind of console quality to it, nice. to me. So like that. Uh, and then moving completely opposite to the just utter goofy side... <laughs> Diversity. There's a game called <laughs> Sneaky Sasquatch. I love the which name of this game. As a total, you know... Harry like and the Henderson sequel? <laughs> kind of in spirit, like a construction paper kit kind of art style look right. to it a little bit. Right. Uh, and you play a Sasquatch sneaking around a campground. You know, you, you can just hold your finger to walk around, but uh, then if you just tap, 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 he, he tiptoes. So you, you're sneaking around to campsites, trying to steal food. Not get food. photographed. Yeah, or, not, you know. or, or freak people out or get the ranger on you. Yeah. So yeah, you're just going around looting campgrounds <laughs> and eating as much food as, as possible. So um, that was super fun. And then uh, Capcom. Uh, this this one's from Capcom. It's a, a pretty, probably the highest production value mm -hmm. of anything I saw. It's called Shin Sakai Into the Depths. It's an mm -hmm. it's a seven hour, according to the developers, seven hour plus underwater exploration mm -hmm. adventure game uh, that I played with an Xbox gamepad. You can use any Bluetooth right. controller Bluetooth, on this yeah. one. Uh, yeah, you're kind of moving through, managing your air supply, uh, and and battling these crazy like underwater centipede monster yeah. thing. So, so there's uh, like an element of combat to it yes. as well. Yes, yeah, that, that one was pretty impressive as well. And then sort of rounding it out, uh, I would say Skate City. Yeah. You know, we've been everybody's been dying for a good a new, new skate skateboarding yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, it's EA won't make one, and who knows what happened to Tony Hawk's series. But uh, Skate City seemed pretty cool. It's all different swipe gestures, right. you know, different things uh, you can do on the screen to, to do you know, different tricks, and that, that seemed like, like it looks well, plays well, you do funny face plants with the physics mm -hmm. if you mess up, so uh, good stuff there. And then Super Impossible Road would be the last one Are I think I would highlight. Yeah. yeah, that um, it's a, so it, you're, you're just a, a, a rolling ball down these crazy corkscrew procedurally generated courses, so you can't memorize the tracks. Right, right. They're different every time, and you're actually incentivized to try and 
go off the track and cheat your way and try and shortcut. Oh, nice. But if you're, if okay. you're off track for more than five seconds, you get flagged, you get, you get yeah. flagged and thrown back. So, but you build up a boost as you go. So if you save your boost till you're like midair, then you can try and sort of turbo. So like a down. risk versus reward yeah. kind of element to it. Yeah, so That's I, awesome. I played that, I tried it both with the touch screen, which worked better than I thought, and then I did play it with a gamepad as well. And you know, it just feels like a super tight, you know, F Zero type console right. racing game there. So um, they seem to be curating some really good stuff. It's, They're going to be. It adding. sounds like it. I mean, you, they've got publishers like Capcom on board already. Um, you know, during the event, we saw a cool third-person RPG called Pascal's Wager. I want to yeah. say. Um, and then you know, we've seen other games like Under the Steel Sky and, and stuff like that coming to this, the the service. So it seems like they are putting their best foot yeah, forward. Yeah, I mean, the here. price seems right. The family subscription, the lack of ads in the games, the the lack of gross like predatory microtransactions, yeah. and the and the curation of games, at least so far, seems really good. So. Um, this I'm I'm gonna give this a look. I mean, five yeah. bucks a month is it's is, not it's, it's like literally just skip one cup of coffee a month. And yeah, you've got a, this whole wealth of new games to play on. By the way, on iPhone. So iPad, that was my other question, right? Uh, Mac. Apple TV, like any, and you can pick up. It's all cross save. So if if you're playing on your phone, yeah, uh, you know, you can, on, you on can the drop it, train, and, yeah. and then switch, you know, home and jump on your Mac or on your Apple TV or whatever. Is so. it up to the developers to decide no, that's, wh that's which skews? But it, so yeah. it, it will automatically apply to all of these yeah. things. Awesome. Yeah, so good stuff. Cool. I mean, yeah, it sounds like such a great deal considering some of the more premium games on the App Store are five, six, seven dollars anyway. But just think if Xbox Live Arcade. If all of it had caught, if you had a $5 all you can eat subscription to Live Arcade back in the 360 days. I'll take it. That'd be really good. <laughs> all right, well, for more on Apple Arcade, as you know, news rolls out, uh, you're already in the right place right here at IGN.